Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to my podcast called Ignite. Um, the Lord has been really putting on my heart to start this podcast. It has been a long journey. I have been battling a lot to <laughs> do it because naturally I am an introvert. And this is, in essence, putting yourself out there. And it doesn't always make me feel very comfortable to be out there. But he has put it on my heart and he has given me the things that he even wants me uh, to talk about. And so today I was like, you know what, uh, let's begin this journey. Let me do what the Lord has put on my heart to do. Uh, he gave me two verses uh, that were the inspiration for this uh, podcast. The first verse is Isaiah, uh, the first story. The first verse is John 8, 12. And it says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And the second uh, verse is Matthew 5, 15 to 16, which says, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. He said, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. God is light. And when you spend time with God, there is light. And so I really do strongly believe that God has put it in my heart to help ignite uh, people for his work, ignite people to live a life that glorifies him and to have a ripple effect that we will go on and ignite and ignite and ignite many people, Lord, for as many people as possible to be a podcast that will feature different people. And other times I will be the one uh, doing it on my own. Uh, but uh, apart from being an introvert, I do love conversations and I love to reflect. It's something that I do very naturally. And so when uh, God gives me a word, it's really something to reflect about and to, and to think about. And I really, really enjoy uh, the word that he has been putting on my heart, uh, especially this year, has been living in the now. Um, uh, very ironically, I do not like to live in the now. Uh, my personality is to always chase after something in the future or maybe to try and escape the now or the pressure or the responsibility of now. I wouldn't say I am the best. Uh, my life is the best example of living uh, in the now. Yet as I have uh, read God's word and as God has spoken to me, I do realize that if you do not live in the now, then you're wasting your past and you're wasting your future. In fact, I have come to, to realize that now is the most important part of our life. It is the only thing that is guaranteed. The past, we cannot change. The future, we have no way of controlling what the future holds for us. And I really love uh, the verse in Isaiah, which emphasizes this. Isaiah 43, 18, 19 says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert now. And uh, this verse puts so much emphasis on, on living in the now. Another verse is Matthew 6, 34. There do not worry about tomorrow. But tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has its trouble for itself. Because I do know that a lot of times, we are always worried about this future that nobody has promised us. Eh? Um, we often never, uh, it's all, we often never realize just how important the moment we are standing in right now. People who are successful in the right way are people who have mastered the art of being fully present in their now, and not just successful in terms of their careers, but also successful in their personal lives. I don't believe you can be successful just in your career and not your, I believe that a balance of success is being successful in both your personal and your, and your career. You find that a lot of people are successful in career, but they are not very successful in their, in their personal lives. I really have come to learn that now is so important because with, if you live, if you fully embrace your now, then you have the potential to 
to heal and evaluate and heal from things that have been done in the past and now has the has the potential to change your future so now is the only opportunity that you have that really can change the past and the future and i do acknowledge that now is never really that sexy or it never is pleasant all the time in fact often now looks never really looks like what we want or what we hope for a lot of times we're living in now hoping for god to to do something or for god to to, to change something we are always like i'm now is just is now so i'm just passing through i'm like a rat on that wheel i'm just gonna go through it hoping that i can be able to affect my future never really been present in the moment and realizing that this is an altar now is where god moves now is where god changes things and sometimes when i look back on my life i do realize that they were now that i never never recognized as life-changing moments i am one of those people who always believes that you always have tomorrow where i came up with this nonsense i don't know uh, but i am um, struggle a little bit with procrastination sometimes and always assume that if I don't do it today, I have tomorrow. And so I may not necessarily uh, fully grasp or fully or be fully present in my now. And like I was saying, now often doesn't look like what we are hoping for or what we are dreaming of. And when it does, it's on these most rare occasions. And yet the only opportunity that we have a chance to change things is not the past it's not the future the only opportunity we have to change things is now and i do seriously believe that our enemy works over time trying to distract us distract us with uh, future uh, things we are working for in the future trying to distract us with things from the past that still hurt you know uh, or dwelling on regret never always hoping that we will be blind to now because this is where magic happens, this is where change happens, this is where God moves in your now. No matter how imperfect it is, no matter how hard it is, no matter how it doesn't look like what you could have hoped for, or what you could have dreamed of, this is where we find God in our now. I am really trying to be intentional about living in the now. And as like I have admitted, it's not the easiest thing for my personality. I have met people who find it very few. Most people are always looking for some escape, one or the other, or busy chasing the future, which nobody has control of. We don't even know if we're going to live beyond uh, today or even now, uh, this moment. And so I've been really trying to be intentional about living in the now. And I think a very important aspect of living in the now is really seeking God and trying to understand what is it that God wants. What is the importance of the now that you're in? What is God doing? What does God expect of you? We must be awake. We must open our eyes. No matter the situation, no matter how hard it is, no matter how easy it is, no matter how difficult it is, or even those oftentimes we don't feel like being assertive or pushing ourselves, seek the Lord, ask him to show you uh, what your now is and what he needs of you. Do not miss your now. Do not miss your chance to heal. Do not miss your chance to develop new habits. Do not miss your chance to change your future for the generation coming after you. Do not miss your chance to change a life. Value your now. Forget about this future that nobody has promised us. Heal from the past and stop letting it affect your now. Heal with the wounds of the past. And I think that is just all I have to say today. I don't think I have anything much. I'm still just trying to figure out this uh, podcast thing. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, have a blessed day and fulfill and live and maximize your now. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.